name is Al Bubba Baker, and I live in Avon, Ohio, with my beautiful wife, Sabrina, and I have three lovely children. I played in the NFL for 13 years. I was rookie of the year. I was an all pro. That was my job then, but barbecue is my passion. So how are we doing over here? Fantastic. After my NFL career, I opened up my own barbecue restaurant, and that's where my revolutionary product was invented. It's convenient, it's delicious, and it's all natural. Here you go, you ready? Touchdown! It's important for us to get this investment today because we've spent every penny on this dream, and we've almost wiped out the profits from our restaurant. My family's made a lot of sacrifices, particularly my wife, Sabrina, and I want to be able to show her that at the end of the day, it's gonna pay off. Being in the NFL for 13 years, things don't always go according to your game plan, and it's the end result, winning, that matters. Avon, Ohio, owner of the D-Bone Baby Back Rib Steaks. I'm seeking $300,000 in exchange for 15% equity in my company. And this is my lovely daughter, Brittany. She's gonna make you sharks, ribs, in a microwave in two minutes. Now, I played a little football in the NFL for 13 years. That was my job. Barbecue is my passion. Sadly, I married a woman that doesn't like ribs because they're too messy. So I vowed to find a way for my wife to be able to enjoy ribs. But how do you make ribs less messy? You take the bones out. <laughs> After 20 years, I found the perfect method, and the D-bone baby back rib steaks were born. We are the only people that have removed the bones from an actual slab of rib, leaving the meat intact so that everyone can enjoy ribs with a knife and fork. Our D-bone baby back rib steak is not pieces of meat formed in the shape of a rib. You know what I mean? <laughs> you tell, Bubba. Boneless meats are the way of the future, and the future is now. Make no bones about it, sharks. It's time for some ribs. <laughs> yeah. Always time All for right. ribs. Bubba, bless me with the Bubba baby back. <laughs> Bubba, who'd you play for? Well, I played for the Lions. I was a rookie of the year in 1978. I played for the then St. Louis Cardinals, and then I came back and I retired in Cleveland in 1990. That's a long career, man. Great career. This is absolutely delicious. Yeah, it's very this good. This is really, yeah. really good. Thank you, right. thank you. So basically, I just want to be really, really clear. I buy this, I throw it in the microwave for two minutes. And it tastes like this? You got it. Mm. Often when we go to restaurants, cowboy ribeye, bone-in ribeye, some people actually believe that the bone just tastes better. That's a great point. We cook the product with the bone in it, and when the product is fully cooked, then we remove the bones, then we quick chill it, and then it's packed right away. Is there anything proprietary about how you're removing the bone or you're genetically altering cows? They grow up with no way. Actually, it's pigs. <laughs> Kevin, it's, it's, it's hogs. OK, so why couldn't I just do the same thing? Well, um, you might, you... I, I'm not running, the guys. It's, it's not that much Don't run from the tough questions. OK, I'm not going to run yeah. from any questions. <laughs> Literally run. Right here, Kevin, is the patent for the product. And right here is the patent for the process. Wow. Can I see the process patent? Take them both. So through. nobody else can make boneless ribs? Let me be more specific. No one else can make a fully cooked rib with either one or more bones removed from it. Wow. And how do you get the bones out? If I tell you that, I gotta kill you. Kill him. No, you don't. You got a patent. You got a patent for it, Bubba. You can tell him. Yeah, tell me. Robert, honestly, there's the patent, then there's the know-how. And what I say to people who are gonna go try and reverse engineer and figure out how to do it. I say, good luck to you, because it took me 20 years to do it. I got to tell you something. In the entire history of Shark Tank, I've never seen a patent on a food product ever before. Thank you, because we worked it. Al, what are your sales, and how many locations are you in? 
Okay, our sales are $154,000. Over what period? Over a year's period. We're selling in about 48 stores. You said it took you 20 years to develop this, and you've only been in business one year. What happened to those other 19 years? Well, at one point, I'll be honest with you, I, um, I hate to use this word, I quit. And the reason that this young lady and I are partners is we had an incident where she was in track, and uh, like most dads, I was pushing her. She said, hey, I don't want to run track. I said, you cannot quit. And she said, well, you quit on the bonus riz. Whoa. Oh, powerful. Yeah. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't still be doing what I'm doing. OK, guys, I actually am an investor in a restaurant chain with 450 locations that sells a ton of protein. And this is their second largest selling item, ribs. Here's the big problem with your deal right now. You're asking for $2 million valuation on this thing. You're not making any money. The only value here is in the patent. This reminds me of a story that's so relevant to you. I love stories. The first season of Shark Tank, a guy stood right where you are. He had a folding neck guitar. He wanted to build out a guitar company. The only thing of value was the patent on the folding neck technology. You know where we are today? Where are you at? They are licensing that technology on Fender Bender guitars all around the world. He's going to be rich. Listen to what I'm saying to you. A patent on a food product? That's interesting. And the only value in the patent is to license it to one of the suppliers of protein. I want to take you to one guy okay. that supplies a, you know what? Pigs hate this guy. <laughs> All around the world, pigs are walking around saying, stop the sense of slaughter because of this one guy. <laughs> so my offer is very simple. I'll give you the $300,000. It's contingent on getting one of the large meat processors in America to license the patent. But I want 49%. That's the deal. All five sharks are still in. Kevin has made an offer of $300,000 contingent on a licensing deal with a large meat processor. But he wants 49% of Al's company. That's the first time Kevin actually has a decent idea when it comes to something like this. It's the first time we've heard his stupid idea making any sense. That idea is so brilliant, I'll do the exact same deal, but I'll only take 30%. Bam, Kevin. This greedy savage, his deal is horrible. He's never done a deal like this. If you talk I've to the guy that owns- I've plenty. Al, let me clear it up for you. Yeah, OK, bro. I think you're paying a very expensive price for somebody to make a phone call for you that you could do on your own. I'm out. I would have uh, pitched you that I should bring it to some of the big box stores, some of the club channels like BJ's, Costco, but I happen to think some of the offers on the table are better, so I'm out. But I'm, I'm kind of the same boat. I think you need to fatten up the hog some before it's ready to go. For me, the business would have to be a little bit bigger. That's why you're limited kind of to the licensing play. So for those reasons, I'm out. Okay. Al, you've got two offers. Yeah. Both licensing deals. Al, is this the path that you want to go down? Talk to the guys at Voyage Air and Fender all around the world. I'm the man. And I want you and I to debone this pig together. <laughs> You've got the real deal, and you got the discount license guy. Day one, you're not taking a check, and he wants to take 50% of your company. 49. I'm worth every cent of that 49%. What are you going to do? Um, Kevin, I love the fact that you have made us an offer, but I think I'm going to take Damon's ah, deal. Pick the better man, man myself. He brought the pig right in front of me. Thanks a lot. Right deal, Al. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, guys. <laughs> he was a great salesperson. He was a great pitcher. Yes, he was yes. a great pitcher. the art of pitching. And he so knows how to cook a rib. <laughs> Studying Damon's background, I think he's a guy that enjoys making change. And that's what this is going to do to the barbecue industry. It's going to change barbecue as we know it. Next up are entrepreneurs with what they believe is a better version of a common wardrobe staple. Hi, Sharks. I'm David. 
And I'm Randy. Our company is Bombas, and we're here today seeking $200,000 in exchange for a 5% equity stake. Bombas are athletic leisure socks engineered to look better, feel better, and with a mission to help those in need. The mass market athletic sock hasn't changed in decades. Same basic colors, same styles, same cardboard feel until now. We spent two years on research and development and came up with seven substantial improvements to the athletic sock. The result is the most thoughtfully designed and comfortable pair of socks you'll ever wear. But the story of Bombas goes way beyond re-engineering the athletic sock. We learned that socks are the number one most requested clothing item at homeless shelters. That really stuck with us. So for every pair of socks we sell, we donate a pair. So we hope you'll join us to make better socks for a better world. We brought some socks with us today for you guys to try on. Thank you. Sure, absolutely. Here you go. Can I get these? No, too. Thank you. These two are for you. Sure. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Sure. We'd like to take a quick moment while you're trying them on to take you through our seven substantial improvements. We started with Peruvian Pima cotton. This is a natural fiber that wicks moisture, breathes, stays warm in the winter, and cool in the summer. Up by the toes, we got rid of that annoying seam that's always causing irritation, creating our Invisitel. In the midfoot area, we created our proprietary honeycomb arch support system and added our ultra comfortable performance footbed. And back by the heel, we created a Y-shaped stitch to create a natural cup around your heel and added a blister tab for the ankle socks. So David, Randy, I'm a big runner. I gotta tell you, specialty sports socks are everywhere. Mm -hmm. How are you different? Our primary difference is that we tested socks from everything down to your cheap mass market multi-packs all the way up to your $18 to $22 niche athletic running socks, which is what you're talking about. We found out the major things that made those socks feel so much better and brought them down to a $9 price point. And on that $9 price point, we're still able to donate a pair for every pair purchased. I too am a fine-tuned athlete. I can open up to three bottles of wine in an hour, and I like to do it with socks on. But I have a question philosophically about this idea of giving something away every time you sell. You have to double your sales to give me the equivalent returns that I get from a company that's not doing the same or thing. Or your well, sales double no, 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 no. because of the goodwill that you're putting out there. What's your wholesale? We sell exclusively online. What are your sales to date and when did you first start? So we first started in October of last year and in the, in the nine months since we launched, we have $450,000 in sales. That's not bad. What will sales be next year? We think that we'll close the end of this year at $1.1 million. We think we'll close next year at 2.7, and the year after that, 4.9. Great sales for online. An average margin is 54%. That's shipped to the customer. Including the giveaway? Including, including the, the giveaway. giveaway. And what is your month-to-month -month growth? So our month-to-month -month growth has plateaued this year, but we've also been spending the last two months on fundraising. We've been able to circle $900,000 in outside funding. At what value? Uh, $4 million valuation. Guys, why are you worth $4 million? Well, it's worth what people will pay you for it. But you can get bozos or you can get me. You get both with him. The godfather of bozos right here. Guys, a $4 million valuation in a total commodity of socks is ludicrous. And I think reality will strike because you guys are still sock cockroaches. You're nowhere. You have no market share yet. You have no retail exposure. You could have said that to I, the guy I, I who think started if you Under can Armour raise, too. If you can raise money any company, any of any company. company. you got to start somewhere. If any of these sharks give you money at that valuation, I will forbid it. It's ridiculous. I'm out. Thanks for your consideration. I appreciate your time. So, 400,000 in sales. Uh, impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the challenge. Will it work as a standalone online business for the long term, mm -hmm. or is it supplementary? You haven't convinced me that this will work as a standalone product sale. Let me address that. So in the $450,000 that we've done today, we have spent $0 on advertising or customer acquisition. So all of those sales have come from people telling other people about our product. That's the concern. Word of mouth is not a scalable strategy. Right. So word of mouth was our proof of concept, right? That is what okay, told so us. Okay, so what's the next? So the next step is we're taking this money and hiring people, the customer acquisition specialist, who is gonna raise our base daily sales from 500 to three to $5,000 a day to build our baseline yeah, cushion. David, David, Hold look, on, partnerships David, with globally hotel recognized brands. That's not a good answer for me. That's not a good answer for me. I don't think you've done a good job of telling me what's gonna look like and what the key advantage is going forward. I'm out. 
Great sock, though. Thank you. Before all the sharks are out, you want to change your valuation metrics? We're open offers if you guys want to. Well, let's let another one drop out and see what happens. When I heard you just now say that you wanted to use the money to hire in people, I hate when I hear that. You're, you are two smart guys, and I feel you should be doing everything to run everything that you can right now, the two of you. So I really don't like that strategy. Emma. You've plateaued. And you know when you're viral, i.e. word of mouth, right? Now's the time, nine months in, you should not be plateauing, right? And I get now you want to spend money because you have to. My biggest problem is when you look at Warby Parker, when you look at Tom's, they're very high margin, much higher dollar items. A $9 sock, when it's all said and done with a $5 margin, there's just not enough margin dollars in each sale and each customer, and that's always gonna make you have to run faster and further. And for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you for your Okay, now, we're down to one shark, happens to be the fashion guru. You know that scene in those movies in the ER where they're bringing the patient and the heart is slowly... Boop, 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 boop. Paddle circle. <laughs> That's happening right now. So you have a chance now to readjust your valuation before you hear from the last shark who happens to be in the fashion industry. Do you think you should do that or are you going to go down with the... Boop, boop, boop. Four sharks are out. Damon is David and Randy's last chance to make a deal for their athletic sock company, Bombas. You have a chance now to readjust your valuation before you hear from the last shark who happens to be in the fashion industry. Do you think you should do that? You've heard from four other well-educated people in business. They obviously don't agree with that valuation. Do you have a different valuation that you would like to offer? So we, we came here today, obviously, with your background wanting to strike a deal with you. So you. based on that, we would we would probably be willing to go down to, I mean, how about $200,000 at 10%? That gives you a $2 million valuation. That cuts our valuation in half, but we think you can bring a ton of value to this. 200,000 for 10% is your counter? So you've cut the valuation in half, down from 4 million to 2 million. Specifically for Damon. What, it's only a Damon John deal? I mean, it is. What I other mean, options you guys do you have? Everybody's it would be, out. It'd be foolish to say that he doesn't bring value to, you know, so, an immense me, amount of value. So, guys, I was about to be out, but I like that valuation only because it looks like you do want to get to work. 200000 for 20%. Very sobering to hear reality strike. Very And sobering. I was out already. Sure. I had already was thinking about the next person walking through that door. Sure. And that small indication of you wanting to make a better deal. We're here to make a deal. Okay. I am offering you 200000 for 20%, and then we'll just get to work. So I think, I think we really respect your offer. I think that the challenge with that, and I understand that you might want more equity, is that we need the additional equity to go out and raise capital without giving away 40% of the company What are you raising total. the capital for? We're raising the capital to hire and spend on marketing and you know build out our team. Inventory and product as well. Inventory and product, I'll finance. You'll finance that outside of our deal. I'll finance the inventory. Regardless I'll... of how much it is. Uh, regardless of how much that is, but I, I would have to question what you're doing with the market and everything else, because that's a black hole of advertising. Sure. So um, I will finance the inventory. <clears throat> so our counter to that would be $200,000 at 15% with a $200,000 line of credit. That's just so crazy. OK, guys. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll try to meet you somewhere in the middle. I'm going to finance the inventory, $200,000 for 17.5%. That's it. No line of credit. No. I'm, I'm financing the, the goods. I'm already, I'm on the hook for the goods right now. 
Can we, uh, can we take a moment and call our CFO? Uh, no. Your CFO gave you the bad advice already to ask for that valuation. It's you guys, and I don't want to talk to anybody else. As partners, I'm going to talk to you guys, and you're going to talk to me. Ah, I can't believe this. All right. You have a deal. We'll take Bravo! a deal. Bravo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Great decision. Great decision. Great decision. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Lord guys. Thank you. All right. You can thank me now. You can thank Mr. Wonderful. We got a deal. We'll thank all of you. Yeah. It's a surreal moment. I mean, we've been building this brand, building this company, and now to have Damon as a shark backing Bombas means that the company is validated for us in a, in a new way. Do you like more patterns or do you like more solids? My name is Mosiah Bridges. And I'm Mo's mom, Tramika. And we live in Memphis, Tennessee. These are some nice suits. Fashion, it just speaks to me, and I like to look good, and I like to feel good. Mo's always been a snappy dresser, even when he was four and I allowed him to dress himself. Looking good. He would choose to ride his bike in a suit and tie. You've done a great job. My grandmother was a seamstress for a long time. She taught me how to sew, and after that, my wardrobe got a major upgrade. I love fashion so much, I decided to turn my passion into a business. It's a high-end fashion accessory that will have you smiling and styling. We can put these on our website. My fashion idol is Damon John, and when I grow up, I want to be just like him. I need an investment from the Sharks to hire manufacturers. My strongest suit is designing, and I need a team to bounce my fresh ideas off of. If I don't get a deal from the Sharks, I'll be very sad. I need to keep this dream alive, because my passion is your passion. and I'm the CEO of Mo's Bow, <laughs> handmade bow ties, and I brought with me my lovely momager. Hi, Sharks. I'm Tramika Morris, and we're here today seeking $50,000 in exchange for 20% of our company. Sharks, I always, I mean, always like to dress nice. Even when I was little, I would wear a suit and tie just to go play on the playground. But the problem was, I couldn't find any bow ties that I liked. So, my grandma, she showed me how to sew. And then, Mo's bows became. Now, we've actually brought y'all some amazing bow ties to have, feel, and see the quality of product we offer. Bow ties are classic, but Mo's bows bow ties, we like to call them classic swag. But by investing in Mo's bows today means investing in the future, because we don't just make bow ties. Mo's story has inspired people, young and old, to tap into their passion. Yes, I give everyone the same advice. Figure out what you like doing and find out how you can make money doing it. Figure out, find out. Figure out, find out. It's that simple. Sharks, I know that together we can make a lot of money and make this business really, really successful by helping people look good and feel good in my bow ties. So, I only just have one question. Who's coming with me? <laughs> You are so charming. Thank are you selling any of these bow ties, Mo? Yes. How many and to who? I sold uh, 2,000. Two wow. Thousand. Wow. Did you hand make 2,000 bow ties? Yes. Yourself? Me and my grandma. But you're doing it all in your house right now? Yes. You're running a sweatshop. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Mo? I'm 11 years old. Wow. How long did it take you to sell the 2,000? We've been in business for two years. Most started when he was nine. This year, we've sold a total of 1,500 ties at a total of $55,000 in selling ties. $55,000? Wow. wow. Who are you selling them to? We sell online, and we have 11 different stores across the South. How do people find you, Mo? They find me uh, from different trunk shows. My mom posted it on Facebook and um, magazines. I've been in the Oprah magazine. So he's gotten a lot of wow. publicity. How much does it cost you to make one, and how much do you sell it for? What it costs for me to make one is 6 to $10, and they range from $45 to 55 
Mo, why did you decide on bow ties? Because I really like to dress up. And also my dad and my granddad, they were really dapper men. And <laughs> bow ties make you look good and feel good. I feel like I'm watching, standing right before me, Damon John. Yes. Working with Baby his mother and making his clothes, his first hats in the kitchen. Oh. What do you think, Damon? Is that your new protege? It could be. I'm new in 30 years. I wasn't doing that type of business at that age, so congratulations. What do you need the $50,000 for? We want to use the $50,000 to go home and um, secure a manufacturer. You anticipate a large amount of orders, or are you saying that you already have orders and you want to take the money to utilize it for that? Absolutely, both. We um, currently have 11 stores. We have about five more stores that are waiting. Any big box players, any large fashion players interested? Right now, he's uh, reached out to Macy's and Dillard's and some of the big box players, but right now it's in specialty boutiques. I'm gonna make the assumption that you're trying to build a brand, Moe's Bows, I get it, mm -hmm. because these are expensive. This is not a cheap bow tie. Mo, you're teaching Kevin a very valuable lesson in pricing elasticity. Do you know what pricing elasticity is? No. What that means is when you have more demand than you can supply, what do you do? You raise your prices. When you go to manufacturing, do you not lose a certain amount of cachet around it? Because today, it's handcrafted Mo's bows. Mm -hmm. If you have it manufactured, is it still handcrafted? I believe so. Well, the, the company that we're working with in Memphis, it's a, a lady that used to own a sewing factory. They're sewing, they're cutting, so. I see. And how many can they make a day? At least 500 a week. What will your grandmother say, Mo, when you fire her? Will she be upset? Well, my grandma, she's just funny. She's just, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, she's at, at, she's at 80 years old. She's fine with pretty much whatever Every. we. You're making an 80-year-old woman work 10 <laughs> hours a day? <laughs> <laughs> well, she loves me. She loves well, to feel on my cheeks well, too much. <laughs> are you going to, are you planning on expanding the line to other haberdasheries and, and yes, other things? Yes, I'm planning to uh, have my own clothing line by the time I'm 20. 20? OK, good, nine years. Why do you believe that you need an investor instead of growing the business steadily on your own and making all the profit for yourself? Because I believe I am an MBT, the next big thing. And because oh I've been Oh, my goodness. In... Did you just say MBT, next big thing? Yes. <laughs> and we feel like with your funding and with your connections, we can grow faster. We can really get the brand out there. We want to take the world of male accessories and kind of turn it upside down. We want cool socks. We want fun bow ties, fun neckties. Guys, I'll get it started. Um, I, Mo, you are the next big thing. Thank you. I'm excited for you. But as advanced as my fashion sense is, I don't know if I'm the guy to help you. I'm out. OK, thank you. Mo, I, I appreciate you coming out here today. Thank you. But uh, I don't think I'm the right partner for you. There might be somebody else on this panel who might be a better fit. And for that reason, I'm out. OK. Thank you. Barbara, Kevin, Damon. I'll tell you what I'm smelling right here. What? I smell a royalty deal. Two sharks are out, but Kevin may be interested. I'll tell you what I'm smelling right here. What? I smell a royalty deal. <laughs> oh, my God. Because your margins are so high. They're incredible. You could afford to pay me $3 a tie if I give you the $50,000. Do Mo. There's your first offer. I'll give you the $50,000. I don't want any equity in Moe's bows. I want $3 every time you sell a tie. Here's my take on it. Uh, it's a family business. Hmm. And you're doing true. very well. So it's not like you're standing alone. You're surrounded by people that love you, support you, and they're working for you. And you're hardly grown up. <laughs> I honestly don't think you need anybody's help. I think you're onto something here. Your margins are great. You're selling them. If you could keep the publicity going, I think that is amazing. And you being who you are, why wouldn't everybody write about you? Yeah. Right? Absolutely. For those reasons, I'm out. So in 1989, I was offered $10,000 for 40% of my company. My company was only a couple of hats I made, right? 10 years later, that would have been worth to somebody else $40 million. I'm glad I didn't take that money. I strongly suggest that you don't take on investors at this time. So 
I will guarantee to mentor you, but I will not give you the money at this time. And I think the mentoring is way more valuable than the money. So in regards to the deal, I'm out. In regards to mentoring, I'm in. Perfect. And don't do this deal. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, Mo. I believe in you from the beginning. And the way I'm showing my belief is I'm writing a check. Everybody else, talk. You also will have Mr. Wonderful as a mentor instead of myself. No, no, you can also wow. mentor. I won't, I, won't, I won't be able to do that because you, it, it will show that you're not listening to me. I want to take you down the path. Wow, right? listen to that. Wow. He so, is telling you not to take my so money. So once you do 10,000 ties, think about sending this guy $30,000 every time you do no, your ties. And you would have made on that well, I know forever. It's a, very, it's a very, very difficult decision. What are you going to do? Well, we appreciate all of your comments and all of your feedback. Um, Mr. Wonderful Kevin, we appreciate your offer, but we're going to have to decline. Yes. <laughs> Damon, we would love to uh, to work with you Absolutely. as a mentor and take Mo to to the next level of where uh, of where he could go. Do you agree with that, Mo? Mo. Mo, you're thinking about <laughs> I'm it. Mom doesn't CEO. like it. Mo is the CEO, but I'm the CEO of Mo. So. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Okay. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Thank you, guys, so much. Really well, appreciate the offer. Congratulations, All right, and I'll Thank be you. speaking to you. All right. Perfect. With Damon John as my mentor. But Damon, I'm on my way. And you know what I like about him? He said he's gonna do clothing by the age of 20. Nine years. He's not thinking tomorrow, tomorrow. He's gonna develop his business. I think he did him a huge disservice. I think you're an animal. Oh, no, listen, I think that would have worked beautifully. <laughs> Dive into the Shark Tank YouTube channel and subscribe now.